So my husband is building me a dream house and I'm paying for it. But he is the only one who would allow me to have this space. So essentially, he is the mastermind of what needs to be done at home. But at the same time, I cannot have a say in the design. And he has no comprehension of what I a request of a greenhouse. But without his permission, greenhouse cannot even happen. So he's controlling the money, he's controlling the outcome, and he's controlling the design, not understanding what I want from my garden. He will even pluck out the one I actually I had a very nice plant growing for three years now. They dug it out already on the pretext of doing a greenhouse. So so the challenging part for me is without him I cannot do anything at home. Like this is why he threw this out, right? Like I told you this, right? So yesterday I went in and he will use a tone that's very painful for me in front of his workers. He tells me, I said, Keith, I said, I want the stairs to be sideways so it doesn't poke out from the greenhouse, you know, like so, like, you know, because the tree house is on top. So one of his criteria is I have to sit right under the tree house and it has to mirror the exact dimension. So I told them, instead of making it look out, why cannot you do it like a tiny house? They'll have like these racks that you can like, you know, walk on the shelf. Have you seen those? Mm -hmm. So he decides that's not okay with him. And I said, in that case, if I'm going to pay for the greenhouse, if I'm going to have that area, I said, I don't want anything to do with it this year. And I said, I want you to leave me alone and I don't need a greenhouse. So he tells the worker in front of me, who is actually an alcoholic anonymous recovery guy, okay? He's giving him, uh, we, uh, like, you know, I don't know how much he's paying for her. He's saying, don't worry about her. She'll always change her mind. I felt so insulted, you know, like, and it broke my heart to be spoken like that in my home in front of a, a stranger. So I decided, I said, it's not that. I said, you are not listening to me. So he doesn't care, okay? So then yesterday, same thing happened. But afterwards, like, you know, I pulled up. Because one thing is, I never hold it against the person. I'll forgive them and have them. The only thing is, I need to have enough breath to heal the pain in me. So it's not what they say. It's like, why am I still feeling hurt? Why do I need to believe that I need him to treat me as respect for me to feel respectful? So that's the space I'm working on. So I decided, you know, it's not about him. It's okay. So I'm going to let it go. But I need to heal my pain. It took me like two hours. And then when he came for lunch, that's the way it was Father's Day. I said, hey, kids are waiting for you. And he kind of like, you know, he'll just totally blow off how he hurtful he is. And I said, that's fine. So yesterday, first thing that happened was, I said, so I wanted to validate you. You know, he did a very good job on the greenhouse. I said, thank you, Keith. I said, he looks really nice. And he was saying, see how nice I'm doing it for you? I said, yeah, that's right. Because I only want to validate good things. You know, like I don't feel I want to go back, pull the garbage back. It doesn't mean like I don't understand. But I feel that, and that's what he thinks I changed my mind. But that's okay. That's where he is at. But I feel I know me, you know. So he said something. He says, don't disturb my person. And I said, can I ask you something? Because I still wanted to ask whether he'll put it sideways. He says, let's talk inside further. Let's not disturb him, honey. So he kept moving me around. And then he lowers his voice. So in front of his uh, worker, he kind of like comes up uh, very commanding, very authoritative. And the next thing he says is, honey, we we'll talk about it, what you want, okay? So he goes in. And I said to him, why cannot it be sideways? So he says, it would it be too steep and it wouldn't work. Why didn't he say that one week before? Right. So he breaks me down in such a way. So I was actually like, you know, yesterday we didn't have electricity. So we I decided since I have some extra time, I was I couldn't do like you know certain things. So I said, let me sleep the bathroom. So I was actually literally on my hands and knees, like, you know, sweeping the toilets and stuff. And that's when I realized 
once when I got married, the first thing he said is, I'm going to tame the shrew in you. So, so I said, finally, I'm the shrew that has tamed. Here I am wiping the bathroom. You know, so when he came in, I said, hey, look at the bathroom. I said, I want to be the perfect wife for you. He says, you are a perfect wife. He says, nothing wrong with you. I said, oh, thank you. Because he never <laughs> he was praising me. So like, I just wanted to see how he thinks. You know? So I finally realized what he did was made me lose my identity at home. Mm -hmm. And so my identity was stolen. And that's when I was thinking. And he says, okay, we are done talking. Can we go for a walk? And I said, yeah. So he says, I'm going to be quiet for some time, okay? You cannot talk. I said, okay. So I walk with him. It takes a lot of energy to work with my husband. So, so I was like, you know, thinking, finally what he's done is broken my identity at home. I have no place that I can start on my own. No place at all, unless he gives me permission. But the thing I realized afterwards was losing my identity with one man is fine. But why don't I lose my identity with my higher self, my teacher, you know, my God? And I said, that is the perfect space I have been running away from, which is, for me, make more sense to be lost in my identity with God rather than lost in my identity with a man. And it's all mm -hmm. for him to pay for me. Like, you know, it's almost like I don't need to go searching anymore. And I felt so healed. You know, my teacher looks like he got it. Last night he gave me a special gift. It, it almost looked like it pierced my brain. He put a seed in it, went, dropped into my left hip. And I fell asleep and I could see my mother very close up. My mother is not in, in person, but he, she's on the other side. But I could not see ever her vivid feature. But it looked like I had a water medium and I poked in and I could see my mom's feature so clear. And I woke up and my mom like you know, felt like she was dancing on the other side that I got it. And she gave me an energy hug. And it was middle of the night. My son came in. So it's almost like she's cueing me and saying, I am got you on the other side. I'm watching over your kids. Don't worry. Because one of my eldest one's friend, uh, mother was freaking out. They didn't tell they were in a beach late at night and stuff. So I texted my son, he immediately picked up and he said, mom, we are coming home. So my mom immediately when she here, like that's the way I perceived it. She was tracking my son. So the minute I saw her, my son walked in and I, I woke up and I, and I, so because of her seeing her, I woke up and I could see him in the shower, I mean, hear him in the shower. Yeah. I told him, Ricky, I said, it's very important for you to check in with me when you come in, you know? And it was in the middle of the night. He said, okay. He was drunk. He brought me in the shower just so that I wouldn't catch him. I knew he was just going. <laughs> uh, so, like, you know, like, I have no idea what they were doing and stuff. But I decided it's not my business. But what I'm saying is, even though they are appearing normal, people are very challenging. So... If I can teach you guys these skills, I have achieved what I wanted. But I don't know how to teach it in a way. Because it's not like you're losing yourself. It's not like you're being abused. It's not like I'm being abused. It's like working in a way that makes the other person shift their thinking so they treat you better. But the outcome you want cannot be achieved by changing your tone. So they are trying to mimic their way of being treated. Don't buy into it. You know, you never change your voice. And actually, I'm going to play this. My my father got married to an Italian lady, okay? I'm going to play this so you'll understand what I'm talking about. Everybody around me are very difficult. This is my father's wife. This for my dad. She is this. And she believes it. She can talk to me like this. Very evil you are. I'm telling you, stay away from me. 
And they expect me to treat them normal. And so, so uh, like you know, see, uh, I'm not saying my life is unique, but I feel I never changed my tone. And I decided not to talk back to that type of tone, but I use all of music. So that allows me to not engage in the play. This tone I didn't like. So I'm not going to return it. I'm not going to play the music on my ringtone, you know. So, so I'm like saying, if you approach life as a big, uh, what do you call it, concert, you can heal your life. Does it make sense to you? So you can implement it and tell me. So one of the things I'm letting you guys do for homework is this is all. Look at the other person who's talking. Think about what has been said. Wait your turn to talk and say what you want to say. And again and again and again you're going to repeat and then bring back what happened when you did this homework. And what were the skill? You score yourself. Did you do well? Like, you know, so consciously reflect. Like, did you do excellent, good, fair, poor? And what is what is that you can improve? So this is all they want to do for 26 weeks. Is it doable? So you just practice on your children. Make it simple. I'm so proud.